Today, it's out with the cheetahs and in with a simple doll sheep habitat. Let the chaos begin. So yes, I lied and it's not really a simple doll sheep habitat, but then that's kind of the norm here because when do I ever build something simple? Or at least it's simple for my standards, but then there will probably be people like, fuck you poison. <laughs> but yeah, so basically the cheetah habitat just was... I mean, it was supposed to go for a long time. It just didn't really fit because it was just kind of this outlier of like the African area. But then the central area just felt way too small to really be an area on its own. So then I decided like, all right, we are going to get rid of the cheetahs anyway. So let's turn this habitat into a dull sheep habitat because then it works with the central area. And also... The one thing when it comes to the cheetah habitat is I really dislike that it had like a lot of just flat walls. You will have seen this with a lot of my more recent habitats where it's just like, I want curves. So when it came to removing the cheetah habitat, the first thing I did was like, all right, let's add some curves. A lot of curves. Just all curves. Like I think that there's only like, a handful of flat walls and those are usually in the indoor section because they're just simpler to have some straight flat walls instead of curvy walls but then even there the roof is curved in multiple ways but anyways so when it came to the idea for this habitat as i said it was supposed to be like all right let's take this away from the african area and throw it in with the central area just so that that area has more habitats because since we got rid of the other habitat and the red pan habitat, the central area only had like three habitats. So it was just like, yeah, that's not enough to really be an area on its own. And then it was just a guess game of like, all right, which animal is it going to be? <laughs> because I for the longest time was just like, all right, maybe a monkey cage. Nah, that doesn't really work with the grizzly bear habitat right next door because that also has like the really high fences that kind of look like a cage. So it would just be kind of more the same. So then it was just like, all right, I want to have like a North American, South American area or not area, but like animal because we're not really going to get a North America or South American area in Naturalis. Because I don't want Naturalis to take a full year to complete. So it was just like, oh yeah, the central area, that's where we can place those animals. It doesn't have to be themed as such, it's just going to be generic modern team. But I can put in those animals there. Or at least a few of them. So it's like the grizzly bear and then now the doll sheep. The armor leopard is going to stay... And I have no idea what I'm going to do with the raccoons and the skunks. I might change that area up for foxes, but I don't know. That's the one thing with like the raccoon and skunk habitat. It's just like, it's so like just boxed in. Like the cheetah habitat, it was large enough that I could make it smaller for the doll sheep. And still have like a good sized habitat. When it comes to the raccoon and skunk area... Uh, yeah, that habitat is just so small and it just has to be a box. So that habitat is going to be fun if I want to redo it. But anyways, when it came to the doll sheep, because I first wanted to do the llama. And then I realized, yeah, I need some kind of like central feature. And it was just like the doll sheep just come with a central feature because they want this giant enrichment rock. And I was just like, yeah, this is going to work. It gives a little bit of height, but doesn't make it feel like there's going to be like a monkey box or aviary kind of vibe. And when it came to the doll sheep, I was immediately just like, I want to keep the fences as low as possible. So instead of making like really high fences, because when it comes to doll sheep, I always just think climbing. Like when I think of doll sheep, I just think of like the sheep in Italy who are able to climb basically vertical walls. It's a really cool sight, but yeah, when it comes to building a habitat, it's immediately just like, all right, how am I going to do that? Oh yeah, 
have it lean inwards because then they can't climb it. I still have the feeling that like if, if a tall sheep can jump, they probably will be able to kind of get out of here close to the interior or close to the actual building. It was just like, all right, let's make the incline go towards the animal so that they don't have anything really to climb on. Unless these tall sheep suddenly just become fucking ninjas and what is the thing called where they just like the rope, not rope dart, but they, you know, you have the rope with the hook on it and basically doll sheep ninjas. That sounds fun, actually. Also, science, immediately when I thought doll sheep ninjas, for some reason, I immediately just thought like, have I ever tasted sheep? Like, I'm, immediately my brain just went to food, which is like a very big thing for me. It's just like, yeah, murder, chaos. Food. Somebody actually pointed it out, out in like the comments of like, yeah, Poison says like, oh yeah, there's an evil corporation behind naturalists search. And then the next sentence is just me going on about nuggets. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's basically like there, there's two squirrels in my brain fighting for control. One wants to murder everything and the other wants to eat everything. Most of the time the thing that, or the squirrel that wants to eat everything wins. But other times, I want to put in a murderous psychopath red panda mascot in Naturalis and just see what happens. I've been watching way too much Five Nights at Freddy's. What I haven't been watching too much, because you can't watch it too much, is City Skylines. <laughs> I'm going to give myself kudos for that transition. <laughs> or not transition, that... Uh, yeah, there, I think there's a third squirrel. Actually, the third squirrel is on vacation because that's language skills. That squirrel is just gone. <laughs> because I will just forget the words. But uh, yeah, when it comes to City Skylines... Yeah, that's going to be a thing. That's going to be a big thing. <laughs> because... Hey, I'm an... Ur I can call myself an urban designer now. Because I graduated. I'm going to keep bringing that up for the foreseeable future. It's like the thing that's going to basically be my personality for the next few months. But anyways, yeah. I'm just like thinking now of like, all right, what am I going to do? Like how, what am I going to build? Because I'm going to build a city. Is it going to be total chaos? Is it going to be realistic? Is it, what is it going to be? But yeah, there is going to be city skylines on this channel. I'm actually preparing things when it comes to Plan 2 beforehand because I know that I will just go off the grid or just go completely crazy as soon as City Scarlet 2 gets released. Like, I don't even give a fuck that they said like, oh yeah, performance might not be the best or what we intended. I'm just like, no, I don't care. I want to build a city because Plan 2 already, like, Kayan okay, Al-Bashar, Valhalla, even in Naturalis, I already built city. So like having a city game is just that's yeah, I, I had like a good sentence lined up there, and then that squirrel that possesses my language skills just decided nuke it. Can you do that in city skylines? Nuke your cities. I mean, I think you could cause earthquakes. Will you nuke cities? This is the violent squirrels winning the battle. <laughs> Anyways. Moving back to the actual habitat, so yes, be prepared for like City Skylines 2 content. But anyways, back to the actual habitat. I did say everything was going to be curved. Now the thing when it came to this habitat and just the building for the doll sheep was... Alright, I want everything to follow the curves and just try and figure out the building that. Like a lot of times I have like some Pinterest ideas for buildings here it was just like yeah let's follow the curves let's put some straight lines in there because here's the thing round buildings are really cool looking when it comes to actually like decorating them or living in them they are a nightmare because every piece of furniture is basically just built for square buildings or for just straight flat walls so if you have a circular building it's just like yeah Good luck trying to decorate that bitch because it's just not going to work unless you make your own furniture or have it just custom made. And I also just, I didn't want it to do the flat black roof that I have done so many times 
I wanted a nice, smooth, angled roof. And then I built something and then it sort of clicked of like, hey, this building strangely, nicely transitions into the Asian Highlands area just because of the color. It's just like, oh yeah, it's dark enough that it just easily transitions into that area, which I don't know if that's a pro or a con. Because I do want to, to make distinct areas, but then my brain just subconsciously is just like, yeah, let's blend these pictures together. Anyways, with the majority of the building done, I just decided to add some small... This is, I think, the only thing where I'd like, oh yeah, this idea is just coming straight out of Pinterest. Because I'm a Pinterest whore. Like, I... Well, I'm a Planet Zoo whore and a Pinterest whore because I have, like, almost 4,000 hours in Planet Zoo. So everyone was saying, like, oh, I can't build like that. Probably because you have a life and don't spend 4,000 hours in Planet Zoo. So I think you have a great life and I am suffering. <laughs> but when it comes to Pinterest, I'm also a Pinterest whore because I probably have, like, 2,000 pictures just saved. Some of them are just ridiculous because I also like just drawing ridiculous animals. But a lot of them are just like, all right, I'm sitting on the toilet, forgetting about life, just forgetting everything exists. And I'm just scrolling through Pinterest. If, you, if I'm not scrolling to Pinterest, I will just find a bottle and read the ingredients. I think everybody would, is just on the toilet, just starts doing that if they don't have their phone. If you don't do that... I'm worried about you. Like, I will legit grab anything close to me and just start reading it because I'm bored out of my mind. So I will just grab a shampoo bottle. Actually, the shampoo bottles are a bit far away. I will grab mouthwash or toothpaste and just read the ingredients. And I'm especially interested if it says, like, how to use. Because then it's, like, sometimes you're just like, oh, yeah, that's just... Yeah, that's how I use it. And then it's just auto some other times it's just like, what the fuck? This sounds like magic. Anyways, moving on to the actual habitat again. And not about me being a slut for Pinterest or for Planet Zoo. Well, basically with Planet Zoo, it's like it's a toxic relationship. It's just like I spent way too much time on you. But... Anyways, back to the actual habitat. So I actually documented this entire habitat on Twitter. Because I was just like, yeah. Sometimes I do this on Twitter where I just post like, all right, this is how the habitats look at the start. Because when it comes to videos and Instagram and everything, I almost only post like, oh yeah, this is how it ends up looking. You have like these amazing videos or amazing screenshots and such. But... 95% of the time, the habitats look like shit. Because it's most often, it's like the rocks, it's the foliage and such, and the small little details that really make things work together. Because when it comes to this habitat, it was like two, three separate builds before the foliage and the rocks really made it into one. But yeah, on Twitter, I basically just documented the entire build of this habitat and just showed like oh yeah it starts looking like a mess like the circles that i drew at the beginning i just showed like yeah this is how it looks all of the alignment tools and such all of the mud brick pillars all of the red poles that or beams that are used to align the paths like it's a complete mess at the beginning and it's a complete mess for 90 percent or nine ninety five percent of the time and then as soon as i start going into the rocks as soon as like the buildings are done then it starts to like work together and yes during the time that it's not coming together or at least in the beginning it's a real struggle of just keeping up with the build because it's very easy to then just say all right let's like this is not working but it's kind of like just pushing through that phase of the build, getting to those last 5%, and then it's just like, oh yeah, now it's working together. Now it feels like one cohesive build. And yeah, when it comes to foliage and such, it just works wonders to 
make everything feel together and make everything look alive and such which is of course kind of like yeah no shit poison plants make things feel alive because for the last like 20 minutes you've been just placing stone walls and everything like everything that's dead or has never been alive and then when you place things that are actually alive it makes it feel alive no shit poison but it's just like the entire idea just the build coming together and it's also usually like that last five percent it's usually like the biggest thing to do in a way because it's like so many plants that you need to place but strangely and i know like oh yeah it's five percent of course that goes fast but just because of how much plants i need to usually place like i cut out all of the grass that i place because it's just like spamming grass but it's so many plants to place but it goes so fast because you just get into a weird rhythm which i don't usually get into when it comes to buildings like buildings i can build in like 30 minutes in the falls and after 30 minutes i need to step away because my brain is just short circuiting but when it comes to actually putting in the foliage the rocks and those small little details I can just continue building because it just gets into a rhythm. Anyways, also, I started using these dead trees that I found on a workshop. There's a weird thing when it comes to trees that just in my brain, it just doesn't click on how to actually make trees. It's kind of the same thing with like cars and such for me, where it just it doesn't click into my brain. And I just have to like get over like, oh yeah, some things people are just a lot better at so i just need to get over like oh yeah i can use things from the workshop i just don't want to like copy paste it completely i don't know like how to properly explain like my resistance to using things from the workshop because i always just have the feeling of like if i didn't build it myself that it just it's not like things from the workshop are bad it's just that like I will just criticize myself for like, you could just try and build it yourself, boys, and at least try and build it. And then it's just like, I don't have any of those like hangups when it comes to fonts and such. Because when it comes to fonts, that that's just magic. Like, that's just dark sorcery. Like, how many goats did the people making fonts like slaughter to just find the pieces to make a font? I got minuscule fonts. Like, how the fuck did, did they make those? Because I look at the pieces and I'm just like, yeah, that's a wall. That's like a nice fence and such. And then some other people are looking at these pieces and that's like, that's an A, that's a B, that's a C. And I'm just like, bitch, what? Anyways, so yeah, I have a weird hang up when it comes to using things from the workshop, which I know shouldn't be the case, but it's just like, I... It just feels weird, like I can't really explain it uh, of like, I don't know. Anyways, let's move on because now we're building the final things for this build, which were just tiny things like an info board or info board. I think it's the right name, but there's a different name, which is actually better. But it's basically just a board where like if there's like, let's say a changed opening times or like a certain shop or habitat is closed, like that gets all posted on this info board it's usually like right at the entrance or nowadays probably on an app as well but i just wanted an info board here just because it just felt appropriate here like i felt like it needed some kind of board so just placed one of those or made one of those here's also the thing when it comes to all of the smaller details like this water fountain thing because I don't want to place water shops in Naturalis because it just feels kind of eh. Like water is usually not, like unless you specifically ask for bottled water, it just feels kind of weird to just have like, yeah, let's give you some, what is it, tap water and make you pay five bucks for it. It's just like, no, you, you get like a water bottle you bring from home and then you can refill it at certain places at these water fountains and such. It felt like just a very natural thing to have in a zoo 
where you will just have these water fountains or taps where you can just fill up a water bottle that you might have brought for her from home or like you bought like a smoothie and you reuse the bottle to get some water kind of just made sense in my head so yeah and then it's just placing all of the plants again because i am addicted to plants i'm a slut for pinterest i'm a slut for planet zoo i'm also a slut for plants because it's just like yeah more plants more more like this entire area was just supposed to kind of blend in with the rest of the central area central's basically just every animal that doesn't fit in any of the other areas just goes to central because it's just it's the generic starter area but this area was just or this habitat or build was just supposed to be kind of like an extension of the central area and then i went insane basically the doll sheep habitat turned into a park because i was just like yeah i want more plants because i wanted the doll sheep area to be secluded and basically i have this sort of wall off vibe from the african area so i was already like all right i need a lot of trees on that side and then i went ah plants and just start sniffing plants like it's fucking coke like i uh, i have a problem when it comes to plants also a problem when it comes to like this specific flower i think it's like the labrador teal i don't know what it's called it's something with labrador because of course that's the thing that i cling on to it's not the actual full name of the plant it's just labrador because then i just see a visual of a labrador with like the mane of this flower just surrounding it but uh, yeah i just love those flowers it's just it's such a nice generic flower that can just work everywhere because it's just white it's just bl a blank canvas literally anyways then i as a finishing touch decided because this is already parked let's go completely haywire and let's add a swing now somebody did say in the discord of like yeah this looks mighty uncomfortable probably is but i was just like yeah i don't want a really swingy swing because you know that if I, you place a swingy swing right next to a habitat, some kid is going to try and launch themselves into the habitat. And like, that would be fine if it's like a tiger habitat, because then, you know, the tigers clean up the kid. A doll sheep habitat, you're just going to spook the doll sheep and it's like, they're going to get annoyed. They might trample you into the ground and, you know, the keepers need to clean it up. And it's just, you know, it's a mess. So then I found this sort of sort of weird swing thing i had to make sure that like oh it can't really rotate because then kids would of course also go crazy again somebody said like oh this looks uncomfortable i can't place pillows on these because you know that those pillows are just going to be left outside in the rain as such so after like a week or so they're just going to be green with mold or they're going to get stolen that's also the thing that that I need to think about when it comes to building naturalis because i touched slightly on realism but yeah pillows would probably get stolen but yeah i just made this swing it's not that comfortable but it's probably just like oh yeah just to rest really quick or you know to take pictures because that's also a thing that you need to think about like add some like really photo or photogenic spots because you know you want people to take pictures you want people to show it on instagram because that's free advertisement basically anyway so that's basically how we end off today's video if you like the video throw an angry scroll at the like button if you want to see more throw a nugget scroll at the subscribe button and that's going to be it have a wonderful day guys bye bye